Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I am Penge and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 where we rejoin not Duke Wolfioff of Cupboard but Duke T of Cupboard because of course last time out we saw the very sad death of Duke Wolfioff who died of a broken heart. It was all very sad and very tragic and it was my doubly as tragic because we just hatched ourselves a pretty good plan to get a claim on the English throne which would have been brilliant. It would have been a lot of fun to see how all of that would have played out but alas it was not meant to be. Wolfioff passed away way he took the plan with him and now T has taken over. So when we started playing as T there were a few little bits and bobs that we needed to go and get looked at and dealt with because when you start playing as a new character various things sort of reset and you need to make various decisions about things. So we got ourselves our council sorted last time and our council are pretty good. Our council are very very good indeed and they are certainly helping out Duke T a great deal because Duke T as clever as he is he's a very learned sort of clever man. The rest of his stats are less than optimal, shall we say. If we're being kind, we'll call them less than optimal. If we're being honest, his stats are rubbish. His stats are really quite fabulously terrible indeed. And I mean, you might look at his stewardship and think, yeah, okay, his stewardship's 10, that's average. But his stewardship has been giving a massive plus seven boost by his spouse. So really, his stewardship is three, which is terrible. He's got a base of four. He loses two for being gluttonous, two for being fickle. He gets two back for being just. And then he gets one back because we have a sort of a holy site over in Rome that's currently occupied by people of the Catholic faith. So, you know, he gets a little bit back, but really the bulk of it is provided by his wife. So the only thing he's really good at is learning. Everything else, he is really terrible. So it's very important that we have a good council and we've got an okay council. I'm very happy. Our bishop has got 15 learning, pretty good. Our chancellor is good hat. So our brother, he's got a diplomacy of 19, which is excellent. We've got our marshal down here. He's got a marshal skill of 23. And of course, we've got our very, very good spy master, Nonna, who has an intrigue of 24. The only kind of weak link, I suppose, or maybe the weakest link, I guess, in our council is the steward. Reeve Ethelweird has only got a stewardship of 12. And I mean, that's still good. It's still better than T's. It's still better than T's. And yeah, that's got a plus seven modifier applied to it as well from his wife. So yeah, that's not too bad. It's not terrible, but we could do with someone who's a little bit better. So if somebody does come along, if somebody pops by and, you know, we see somebody who's got a better stewardship than 12, we'll just put them into that job, I think. Because, you know, this guy generates the taxes and he goes through and increases development and all that kind of important stuff. So, yeah, if we see someone who's better, we will replace them. But do you know what? Our council are looking pretty good. We also had to choose a lifestyle and a focus for T as well, because when we start playing as a new character, that's all kind of left for you to decide. But of course, T did live some life. He lived 30 odd years, whatever it was, before we started playing as him. So he's acquired his own perks and things. So he had most of the whole of body stuff sorted. So then we went last time and got scientific because we want to up our cultural fascination progress because that's really good. That's essentially like new tech and stuff. So we got that last time and we're going for a theology focus. So faith and knowledge, understanding the divine means understanding the world. We get an extra point of learning and we get a point of piety per month as well, which is very, very nice. And we have seen a few story things popping up from the theology focus and it's given us a new thing over here where we can hold mystical communions which is very very exciting indeed so yeah we sort of we sort of i don't know light a load of incense and then go into this kind of weird trance thing and we think we're speaking to i don't know gods or mystical beings or whatever but it gave us this We've now got a divine guidance modifier. The voices from beyond aid this character. At least that's how they explain it. We get a point of martial from it and a point of learning. And then when we gain stress, we gain 25% less stress. And then when we lose stress, we lose 25% more which is very, very good. So this is a wonderful thing to have. So yes, it's very good that we're being sort of you know, guided by the divine, which helps a lot. However, we do have a bit of a problem. And that is because we've only just taken over and we're quite new to the job, nobody really likes us very much. We're very unpopular with all the people in our court. Minus 31, minus 86, that guy really hates us. Oh, he's our rival. Oh, we have a rival. So T has acquired a rival over his years. Okay, fine. Minus 26, minus 41. That's our nephew. Our nephew really, really hates us. He's got a very low opinion of us. And um, and he's, how old is he? He's four. <laughs> so he's a four-year-old who really, really despises us. I mean, okay, our kids sort of like us a bit. I mean, our own wife. Our own wife has a negative opinion of us. So yeah, we need to sort of have a look at that. I mean, a few people like us. There's a few. We've got the bishop swayed round to our side. So that's pretty good. But most people do not like us. So we need to have a look at that. And also, we're very, very stressed. 
because we're on stress level one out of three. We've lost 10% of fertility. I'm not too bothered about that. We've got the three children, so that's not so bad. Uh, but our stress currently stands at 123 out of 300. We need to kind of get that looked at. That is not a good thing. So yeah, last time we sort of, uh, we did not choose to take one of the perks that brings our stress back down because they were both quite bad choices. So we just bottled up the stress and we just sort of, you know, we sort of grit our teeth and carried on. But there is something we can do. There is something we can do that makes people like us and it will bring down our stress a great deal. And that is, of course, we can throw a great big party <laughs> because we can host a feast which is wonderful. And because T is gluttonous, because he loves a party, he loves a big pile of food and drink and stuff, he loses 47 stress. So he'd lose a lot more anyway because he's gluttonous. And then because of all of his other modifiers and things, he he's going to lose 47 stress, which is an awful lot. I mean, that'll take us back down onto sort of the first tier. So he won't have a point of stress at all. And it might increase our vassal's opinion of us. I hope it does. And also it might increase our liege's opinion of us. I mean, I'm pretty sure the king is busy. I'm sure the king's out doing, you know, kingly things, but it's fine. I mean, he might pop along. He might pop his head in and we'll give him a, you know, give him a sandwich or something to be on his way with. But uh, let's do this, shall we? It's 100 gold. I've got 144 gold. So it's quite expensive. It's quite expensive, but you know what? It's fine. It will bring our stress down and it will make people like us, which is very, very important. So yeah, let's do this. Let's send the invitations and get that done. So host a feast. Let's get that done. Splendid. We're no longer as overwhelmed by stress. We've gone down to 76 stress, which is excellent for us. And now if we just move time on. Now I know there's a lot more important things to be going on with. I know there's loads of important things. We could be improving our lands and doing developments and all that kind of stuff. We could even be looking at getting the Duchy of Brainiac back under our control. Because, you know, by right, that duchy up there is ours. It belongs to the Cupboard Dynasty, absolutely 100%. So we could be looking at getting that done. But right now, let's just concentrate on our party, shall we? Let's just concentrate on the goings on at our feast. And I like the fact that you can then click on the feast and you can see what's going on. So, right, so at the moment, it's waiting to start. And then as soon as it kicks in, we can see who's actually turned up for the feast, which is splendid. So a cheery gathering. Everyone is here. Welcome, friends. Okay, so pause time for a second. Who is here? Um, oh, that's unfortunate. Our own wife has declined. Our own wife has declined to attend our own party. Bother. Okay, never mind. Right, so Chappie here from Bosworth. Okay, so he's our vassal and he sort of already likes us a bit. He's okay with us. So that's not so bad, but we could do with getting sort of his opinion up a bit. Right, Reeve Athel here, he doesn't like as much either. He's from Rutland, okay, and he thinks he should be on the council. He is not, so he doesn't like us. Um, you, Earl Elfgar, you also think you should be on the council, and you don't like us very much either. And then Frederick the Bishop, I think are there more people. There are more people. So Frederick the Bishop likes us, but it's no bad thing to have your sort of uh, priest liking you even more, so that's good. And then Goodhad. Lovely, lovely, good hat, who likes us a lot. He's our, oh, he's our friend. Okay, so he is, hang on, hang on. He's our brother, our chancellor, our vassal, and our friend. Oh, that's wonderful. We're good buddies with our own brother, but unfortunately, our wife has declined. Okay, now, we've got a few choices to make here as well. With our sway scheme, we're currently swaying Frederick, who's this guy here. He's fine now. He's on, he's on plus 23. That's okay right now. So do we sway our wife or do we, as a few people have suggested in the comments, do we go and sway our spy master? Because our wife has a minus nine uh, opinion of us. Our spy master, who, you know, is sneaky and sinister and likes plotting and doing kind of creeping around and stuff, has a minus 46 opinion of us, which is quite bad. That's not good at all, is it? The last person you want to really hate you is your own spy master. So maybe maybe we will go and sway you. I'm a little bit more nervous about having her not like us. Um, okay, that's fine. It takes so long. It takes so long because his diplomacy is just so low. Okay, fine. Yeah, we'll sway you eventually. In time, we will. And also, back to the council, let's get uh, let's get our marshal guy here to not organise levies because we're not at war right now. So we don't need more levies and we don't need more garrison sizes and all that kind of stuff. Let's get him to train our commanders. So he'll bring the men at arms maintenance down by 28%, which is brilliant. And we might get a new commander or a knight each month. And uh, we might also start improving our knights and the commanders might get traits as well. So we shall do that. Absolutely. Talking of knights, do we need some knights? What's actually, uh, what's uh, what's Duke T's compliment of knights looking like? I'm not entirely sure. We didn't check. Um, oh, they're, they're a bit rubbish. They are a bit 
A bit rubbish indeed. Hang on. Good Hat is entirely forbidden. Yeah, you're not allowed to go out and fight Good Hat. They're terrible. They're, I mean, our best knight has got a prowess of 13. Can we invite some knights? We're missing one. Oh, we're missing one prestige. Hang on. I think we get prestige from doing this thing, don't we? We get prestige from hosting our party sometimes if it goes well. So, okay. Please have a good party. Feast. The dilemma. The feast is dwindling down. I find myself deep in conversation with my friendly vassal, Reeve Thurfrith of Bosworth. Okay, he's the guy who likes us a tiny bit. Um, maybe because our dad created Bosworth. Bosworth was just a field, and so dad built a town there. So well done, dad. Um, inquires about my opinion on the blessings of family, a subject he's deeply interested in himself. It's a subject that fascinates me as well. Uh, 20 opinion of us, and we grow closer to forming a friendship, or... I could not care less. He loses 20 opinion of us. Okay, well, this is a bit of a no-brainer. We sort of did this whole thing to make sure people liked us. So, yeah, okay, get opinion of us, please. And that's more than 20. Has he become our friend? He has. He's become our friend. So now we've got ourselves a couple of friends. So we've got uh, we've got Good Hat and we've got Thurfrith there. Feast in my house. I did everything I could, ensuring that Reeve, Athel here and Frederick would be as far from each other as possible. It was not enough. And they have come to blows in the middle of my feast. One of my guys is close to the brawl and looks to me for the order to intervene. Okay, who do we tell to stop being a Wally? Okay, so if we tell um, Chappie there, if we tell... I know, right, this is throwing Frederick out. So this is throwing out the bishop. So this guy here, who doesn't like us from Rutland, he gets 20 opinion of us and we grow closer to forming a friendship with him and we grow closer to forming a rivalry with, uh, rivalry with Frederick. That's bad. We don't want to have a rivalry with our own bishop because, yes, he lets us, he lets us have all the church holdings and the church taxes and all that kind of stuff and the levies. Or we could restrain that guy who won't like us even more, but we do get a good, nice boost with uh, our own bishop there. We'll do that. Let's restrain Athel here until things calm down. So he's really not going to like us at all. But how does the bishop like us now? Plus 43. I sided with him and he likes that. Okay. That is very, very good. Okay, I do like how this guy is a bishop. Yeah, he's deceitful, gluttonous, and lazy. Well done, sir. I don't know quite how you got into the church, but there you go. Come on, give us a big pile of uh, big pile of prestige from this, please. That'd be handy. In fact, we are getting quite a lot of prestige coming in. How about, um, yeah, let's go and invite some knights. I think it's 150, isn't it? 150, here we go. Let's hope we can get some knights in. That'll be quite handy. And another thing, actually. Hang on, uh, court. Yeah, we don't have a... We don't have a physician. Oh, we need to wait until the knights are in before we can get the doctor. We've got an activity underway already. Okay, fine. Well, we'll get some knights in. That'll be fine. My sister Christina and my niece, Leof Gifu, were captured during a siege. Oh, no. Oh, no, Christina. What's going on down there? There is a war going on. Oh, crikey. You're all the way down here. So you've been captured. So your place is over here. Hang on. Who are you at war with? Oh, well, you've, you've lost that particular war. You were attacking in the holy war for the sheikdom of oh you were involved in a holy war oh dear okay it's not gone too well it looks like you've been locked away but it looks like the war has ended or that particular conflict has ended i assume that's it during the siege of tiberius so there seems to be two wars there's somebody defending but no that's caliph that chap there that's that chap there isn't it that's that guy yeah okay oh dear Oh, that's not good. That seems a very unfair war. Six soldiers versus 1,844. I mean, they better be good soldiers. Yeah, okay. And we can't do anything, can we? We can't do anything at all because she's just too far away. She's too far away to interact with. So we can't go and help our sister or our or our niece. We're just going to let them just get on with it and deal with their own issues because they're just so far away. Oh, no, look, and Tiberius is, has fallen. Is she going to lose all the territory? Is she going to lose the territory? I really hope not. Okay, let her out, please. Let her out. I don't want her to be locked away. And a knight has arrived, which is wonderful. Let's have a look. Are you any good? Uh, yeah, you are quite good. 16 prowess. We'll have you as a knight. You're a blade master and an open terrain expert if we want to make you a commander. But you've only got a marshal of seven, which is rubbish. But no, we'll have you as a knight. Absolutely. Can we recruit you? 25 gold. It's nice and reasonable. Yes, absolutely. In you come. 25 gold. Welcome aboard. Get your night things on. I mean, we're not going to do any fighting for a little while. You can, you know, you can you know, get in, you know, get sorted, get comfortable. A curse undone. The twists and turns of fate have not always been to my advantage. God knows I was cursed the day I met Elfnoth. 
Who are you again? Elf North of Bedford. Oh! Oh, this is wonderful. So our rival is, is dead. Our rival that T has made whilst you know, he was being his own person, not being controlled by us, uh, has now died. Okay, so what does that do to us? We lose, we lose 47 stress. We're on 76 as it is. Okay, he's dead. Stress down to 29. And our niece and sister have been released. So Leof, Gifu and Christina are out of the prison. Okay, right. That's good news. That is very good news. And that party finished. There we go. As my guests depart, everybody goes away. I have my wife, Leo de Gundia, to thank for much of its success. And I feel nothing but gratitude as she sees the last few guests off. So she didn't turn up herself to the party, but she was sort of there in the background helping out. Until next time, we gain 150 prestige. Very welcome, because we just spent a load of it on nights. And every guest gets 20 opinion of us for 10 years, which is very helpful. So, okay, there we go. Oh, that was wonderful. That went very, very well. Apart from a little kind of brawl in the middle, that went very nicely. Oh, this is wonderful. So Reeve Ethelweird, who likes us a bit now, is he our buddy? No, he's not our buddy, but he likes us. Um, he has just got the trait Legendary Blade Master, which gives him plus 12 prowess, which is very good. So now he's got, oh, plus 13 prowess because he's very old, so he loses 11 points of it. Oh, okay. That's not quite as good as I was hoping. I thought maybe we'd get someone in the 20s, but uh, but no, never mind. Right, another knight has appeared. Hello. Um, yep, 17 prowess, and you are gallant. Okay, so that gives you a nice sort of boost to your prowess. Okay, wonderful. Can we get you on board? 127 gold. It costs 30, absolutely. And we can get ourselves a new perk as well. So there's a few. This, this one here is quite good. Iron constitution is good. Disease resistance, a massive boost. However, I quite like the look of this. Learn on the job. Now, I know we can't get it right now. We've got to go all the way down the trees. That's really good. 20% of our counselor's primary skills are added to our own, which might help. You know, it'll help give T a bit of a really, really well-needed boost to his stats because, you know, as we've established, he's a bit rubbish. So that 20% of our counselor's primary skills added to our own, that's got to be very, very good indeed. I mean, our marshal... It's got what twenty three. Even if they had, even if he had twenty, twenty percent of that is four. So he would get an extra four. He would pass on four extra extra martial skill to T. So that would go up to eight. Of course, that does depend on who we've got in the jobs. It does depend on who our counselors are. And of course, yeah, our um our current counselor sort of uh, squad might not make it through until the point when we've got this done. They might, you know, die in battle or of age or of illness or whatever. But you know, if we've got vaguely good people, that should be quite good. That'd be quite good to give T a much needed boost. The only thing is we need to get down there first. We need to go through all of these things. So we've got scientific. Planned cultivation could be quite good. Increased development in county efficiency plus 20%. Why don't we go for that? And then we can just start going and developing some of our counties around the place. Let's do that. We'll grab that. And then where's Chappie? So you here, let's go. Let's clear all those. Um, let's go and start improving our sort of uh, development around the place. Right, where needs doing? It looks like Stafford might need doing. Development of nine. What does that give us? So levies increased by four and a half percent. Tax increased by four percent. If you get it up to 11, that's five and a half and five percent. So it's certainly worth doing. So let's get you over to there. And you should do that as well 20% quicker, which is very good. So yeah, I mean, it's already on 80 out of 100. So that should tick up quite nicely. So we'll get you doing that. You're improving relations with all of our vassals and stuff. You're training people. Um, you're just sort of, you're just disrupting schemes. That's absolutely fine. Okay, right. Everyone keeping busy. We've still not swayed Nonna yet, but that's fine. That's going to take a heck of a long time. If only we were, if only we were better at diplomacy. Oh, Earl Goodhat has been hosting this chappy here, Reeve Wolfgar of Coventry, and he's been very, very good. I am nothing less than honoured to serve as your vassal. Even though you really, really don't like us very much at all, I am blessed to have such grateful servants. He gets 30 opinion of us for five years. And yeah, that doesn't come from us at all, but that's very good. And that's bought that and it's creeping up. It's creeping up ever so slowly, which is very good. And of course, short reign. Short reign is sort of affecting our sort of opinion, well, people's opinions of us, because we've not been we've not been sort of around on the job for very long. But of course, that's slowly going to tick down. I mean, it's on minus 10 right now, which is really, really big, but that will slowly tick down. I and mean, then at some point that'll be naught and everybody will have a slightly better opinion of us because, you know, we've been running a place for a little while. Right, a chappy has appeared. A notable guest has arrived. Wolf here, Grey is an experienced fighter. Oh, Wolf here Grey is a very experienced fighter. Okay, you're a master hunter 
which gives you plus six prowess, which is very good. You're a logistician, so your supplies last a bit longer, and you're an organizer, so you move quicker, and when you retreat, you lose 20% less people, and you're a tough soldier, so you get a bit of martial. Yeah, can we get you? Can we actually recruit you, please? 40. Come and be one of our knights. So our knights now must look very different. We must have sorted our knights out good and proper. 19, 17, 16, 13, 13, 11. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. They're much better. They're far, far better than they were before. And now, let's go to the court. Let's go and look for a doctor as well. Somebody go and find me a doctor. We need a doctor, please, because, you know, in this world, something bad's going to happen. So we could do with getting somebody who's going to look after us when we get a bit poorly. So who have we got? Elf Stan, who's got a learning of 16, but no sort of doctor trait things. But he's very, very clever. Or we could get um, Bourgogne de Bashmore, possibly. Um, she looks she looks a bit more fighty. She's a logistician. She's a military engineer. She's an unyielding defender. And she's a skilled tactician. I'm not entirely sure she uh, fits the profile of a doctor. Maybe somebody out on the battlefield, like a battlefield medic, possibly. Um, we could get this guy. He's got quite a good, quite a good learning ability there. Yeah, he's got no sort of doctor skills though, but he can pick them up. He can pick up sort of, you know, sort of surgeon skills and stuff. Let's get you 42 money. Um, yeah, okay, fine. In you pop, welcome aboard. Right, okay, your job, keep me alive. Just keep me alive and keep everybody else alive as well, please. And another knight has arrived. This guy's only got 14 prowess, but that's still okay. That's still okay. I mean, yeah, it's better than some other other people. So let's get you as well. And you're only 20 gold. 20 gold, get you in. I becoming a knight. Yes, you are. You've got your fancy knight things on. Okay, splendid. Right, so you're in prowess of 14. And, uh, okay, clear that. What did our spouse just do? She's got major architectural expertise. She's got plus two stewardship, which is wonderful. Okay, that's good. Right, so yep, she's improving her own skills. That's always good. Ah, uh, okay, I've just stumbled across something which is somewhat unfortunate. So, up here is the Duchy of Brynjek. Now, of course, it looks like it takes up all of that place there, but it does not. It's, it's a relatively small duchy. It's that bit there. Three counties under it, but we have a claim on this, and we've had a claim on this for a long time. So, uh, Waltheof had it, I think he started with it, as a proper pressed claim. It's been passed down to T as an unpressed claim, but we can still go for it. So it's still, you know, it's still there. It's still legally okay, if a little bit kind of dodgy, but it's fine, and we can try and get this duchy. So I was just looking, thinking, aha, right, okay, we'd need to declare war on Duke Gluithian here. Our good friend Duke Gluithian, oh dear. He's, he doesn't like us. He's not going to be a fan of the Cupboard Dynasty. But if we go to here, we can declare war, that's fine. Our claims, and yes, we want to take the Duchy of Brynek, please, because we think it should be ours. We gain the title, we gain all sorts of the bits and bobs underneath it. That's all fine. But if you look here, we can't declare a war. We can't do it. The button is not there. It's not available. And that's because we need to use a hook on the king. We need to use a hook on King Richard because he has got himself a crown authority level of three. High crown authority is what he's sort of enforcing as vassals to actually sort of abide by. And that means that um, direct vassal opinion is down by 10. But of course, this is up to our liege. So, you know, it doesn't affect us directly, but we like our liege a bit less. We have to pay 10% more in levies and 10% more in tax to him because he's got high crown authority. And then it says there, vassals cannot wage war against other vassals unless they use a hook on their liege. So we do not have a hook on the king. So we cannot go and go and take this place. We can't declare war on Gluithian because we're subject to these laws. We just can't do it. We're not allowed. Which is very, very sad because I would quite like to get that now. I think that would be a wonderful thing to do. You know, the time is right, it seems. I mean, how many troops has he got? 2,600 against that almost 4,000. So we could, we could go and take that with relative ease. I mean, yeah, okay, I don't know if he's got allies or whatever, but that's, that's unfortunate. We can't do anything about it. We can't do anything about it unless we get a hook on the king. Can we, can we send you out to his court? Is that his court down there? King Richard's court, yeah. Let's send her out, let's send Nonna out and see if she can find us, see if you can find a secret on the king. That'd be quite handy. If we get a hook on the king, that would be really, really useful. Because then we can use it to have a bit of a fight up here. And we can take that duchy, which will be very, very exciting. So, uh, yeah, we'll give that a go. I don't know if it's going to actually pan out. I don't know if we can find secrets on the king. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. But do you know what? She can have a go. She can try and find out. She's very, very good. And it's only going to take four months. 
So it's not going to take long for her to keep finding a secret. So, okay, you go down there, do some skulking about and, you know, some gossip and some whispering and spying on people and get us secrets, preferably on the king, please. Oh, that's a surprise. Our wife is pregnant. Okay, I wasn't aware that that was a thing that was still going on between you two, but well done, you're still writing letters to the store. Good job. So she's pregnant. Oh, she's also a drunkard. Oh, so she has a tiny, tiny health penalty. Um, because, yep, she's a drunkard. She's good at hunting. Um, yeah, she's beautiful and Midas touch. Okay, okay, so she is a bit of a drunkard, which is a shame because that brings her stewardship down. So she's doing all this good work to become like you know, a master of architecture. But then, yeah, her drinking problem is causing a few issues in, in her stewardship skills because you know, she can't count the coins anymore. She keeps counting double the amount and then everyone keeps questioning it. Um, okay, fine. Well, there we go. So she's pregnant and uh, the... Ooh, his, his prowess has gone up by two. That's always very welcome. Good job. And our spy master got a secret. And it's that this person is a cannibal. Okay, who are you? You are a guest of King Richard. Oh, no one cares about you. You're not kind of important. You're just a guest. You're just hanging around at the court. No, it's fine. Not bothered. We need a secret on the king, please. Or, I mean, maybe the queen? Can we find a secret on the queen? Could we use that to our advantage to try and leave, you know, get a bit of leverage on the king? I don't know. But, you know, that, that secret was, it's a secret. It's fine. It was a little bit kind of poor. Oh, okay. This is a way more juicy secret. So Earl Richard of Norfolk has tried to murder Countess Mariella. Okay, who are you? You are from Huntingdonshire. Hang on. You're my sister-in-law because that's Goodhat's wife. Hang on a minute. You tried to murder my sister-in-law, Earl Richard of Norfolk. I'm not very happy with that. Okay, I think we definitely, definitely need to go and get that. I mean, we'd get that hook on him. Absolutely. Now, of course, yeah, T, because because he's just. Because T is just. He doesn't like going to blackmail people. It, it troubles him a bit. It stresses him out. But I think that's probably well worth doing. Yeah, you. Do this. Blackmail for a hook. It's only six stress. It's a tiny amount. We've got only got 29. So that should be fine. He might become our rival and he's going to lose opinion of us, but who cares about that? But yeah, attempted murder. Okay, right. We'll blackmail you for that, please. Absolutely. Tiny bit of stress goes up, but there we go. We've got a good hook on him, which is wonderful. Okay, splendid. And yeah, all these are the ones... Yeah, I'd be tempted... I don't want to just grab them all because it will stress us out quite a lot. So we need to be really picky about the people that we do actually go and blackmail. Um, a shared prayer... Exiting the church in Birmingham, I end up in the company of some local merchants, as well as Frederick. They're in the middle of a discussion regarding theology and worldly wealth. I would invest in the church, but how can I know if that is even St. Matthew's will? Okay, help me convince them, Frederick. A learning challenge with a 100% possible outcome of a successful type, which is wonderful. Frederick becomes our friend, we gain 50 lifestyle learning experience, and the holdings of Birmingham gain the building temple grounds. What's that? A temple sits at the centre of the village, carefully constructed by local craftsmen to show their dedication to their faith. The holding of Birmingham. Hang on, where, where, hang on, Birmingham, Birmingham, where are you? Where are you holding of Birmingham? Um, there, the bishopric of Birmingham. Uh, it's already got, is it, hang on, how's that going to work? There's no room for it to fit in. Um, well, let's do this, because he becomes our friend. We get some sort of, you know, lifestyle experience. Where's that going to fit then? Uh, oh no, it's here. It's the, it's the type of building. Oh, Oh my goodness me, we just saved ourselves a massive load of money. So it's gone up from a regular shrine to a proper temple grounds. So a shrine gave us plus 0.5 tax, 125 levies and 150 garrison. That's gone up to plus 0.9 tax. So, you know, not quite double, but almost. Um, an extra 100 levies and an extra 300 garrison strength. We got that for free because T is very, very clever and he convinced them in a nice sort of theological argument or whatever. Oh my goodness me. Okay, right. That was brilliant. That was very, very good. Good job, T. Do you know what, T? For that particular masterstroke there that just saved us 500 gold and has given us a massive boost, I think maybe you can replace your little hat now. You can replace your noble cap with a circlet. Again, it's nothing too showy off it. You know, it's relatively humble. It's nothing really extravagant, but it looks quite nice. And yeah, as much as I like him in that hat, I think he looks quite good in that. He, he looks, you know, he suits that little sort of circlet thing quite nicely. So there you go for your good work there, convincing those people to build a really impressive kind of temple thing in Birmingham. Well done. You've got yourself a new, is it a hat? I don't know if it's a hat, but a new piece of, you know, headgear. And that's splendid.
And our wife has given birth to a beautiful baby daughter, which is wonderful. So, okay, this is very exciting. Now, let's make sure that she has a good Catholic name that begins with a C, because, of course, that's the plan. All the girls are going to have sort of uh, names that begin with C. So, oh, there you go. Okay, that'll do. Clementia. That will absolutely do. So, may you grow to be strong and wise, my daughter. Welcome to the world, Clementia Cupboard. That is very exciting. And let's just pause time for a second. Now, are we doing the right thing with terms of, you know, in terms of educating our kids? Let's go and take a quick look. Now, Clementia, I don't think she needs educating right now because she's you know, two days old. And I think maybe somebody telling her about you know, the finer points of diplomacy or the art of war, that might be a little bit you know, a little bit lost on her. It's going to fall on deaf ears. So um, let's not educate her right now, although she is pretty, which is good. She's got a, a physical trait already, which is splendid. However, the other ones, are they being educated by the right people? in the right sort of way. So, okay, Waltheof. Now, of course, yes, it was a wonderful moment last time when we saw young Waltheof being born because, you know, we'd seen the, the death of old Duke Waltheof and then, um, and then yes, of course, we had a son and so we called him Waltheof. Of course we did. So, you know, he's here in name if not in sort of person anymore. So you're not being educated, I don't think. You've got no relationship. So, okay, you've not got a trait yet. So we don't know what you're going to be like. Let's educate you. Um, let's replace me. Although I could... Do you know what? Why don't I do it? Oh, I am rubbish. I'm quite good at learning, but I'm terrible at everything else. I'm probably not the best person. Probably not the best person. Um, okay, I mean, yeah, it's hard to guess right now. Okay, diplomacy. I don't know. Who's got really good skills in something? Um, you've got 23 in that. You've got 15. Our wife. Our wife could teach them. Or intrigue. Nonna. Or we could get Nonna to teach Wealthy off Tyson Cupboard. She's really, really good at intrigue. That could be worth doing. Um, yeah, okay, do you know what? Let's get her to do it. And that might make her like us a bit more as well. Ah, that could be quite good. Yes, okay, right. Let's do that. So minus 17 right now. What's that changed to? It's changed to minus 17. I thought maybe that would that would alter. Um, guardian of your relative. Oh, plus five per month. Okay, right. In time, that will go up. Okay, that's excellent news. Right, now what about the other ones? So that's that. We won't educate her right now. Okay, Sieghelm. You are going down a stewardship education and you're looking okay with that. Who have you got teaching you? I have a terrible feeling you're being taught by the military guy. Yeah, he is. Okay, he's not bad. He's not bad at stewardship, but he's not the best at it either. Right, maybe we change that around. Okay, right, hang on. Remove Guardian. Hopefully he won't be too put out by that. Okie doke. And then educate child. Definitely not me. If you're going down stewardship. Yeah, probably, probably mum there probably mum. Now, a few people in the comments have pointed out that I'm just sort of going, right, okay, you're best at stewardship, therefore I will pick you. And a few people have said, okay, yes, obviously the, the stat you want them to be trained in is important, but also so is their learning. Their learning stat is also important because that apparently is you know, how well you can also teach because you're quite clever and stuff. So maybe, I mean, we've only got 10, but we have got a learning of 16, which could be quite good. Maybe we should be, but yeah, 10's rubbish for stewardship. Is he just going to be terrible at that? You've got 12 and 10. See, 15 and 8. 15. She's got a stewardship of 15. Let's... There you go. You know what? That'll do. Also, as well, that will make her like us a bit. That will make her like us a bit, which is wonderful. Okay. And then... Okay, so Ethelweird, you are... I mean, you've only got a couple of years anyway on it, and you're being taught by Good Hat. Okay. That's probably very good. And Good Hat... Yeah, you're going for diplomacy education, and Good Hat is very, very, very good at diplomacy. Not so hot on the learning... So he might not be brilliant at teaching you, but that's very good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with who is sort of teaching the kids now. Okie doke. Do we want to get... Hang on, hang on. Where are we? Uh, you there. Go to family. Um, do we want to get somebody teaching her? I know she's only tiny, but should we not get somebody in? Should we not get somebody to, to teach them? Do you know what? No, let's leave them for now. No, I feel like that's a bit silly. Let her be a baby for a bit. I mean, you know, she's, she's a couple of days old. Well, let her, you know, learn how to crawl and stuff. And then maybe, maybe then we'll educate her. Oh, that is very, very unfortunate indeed. So Nonna has done her best. She's dug around and got all the secrets and all the intrigue out of King Richard's court that she can. And we still have no hook on the king. So we still cannot go up there and declare war on Duke Gluithian because we just haven't got the hook. We're just not allowed. It's the thing we're not able to do. So, um, okay, do you know what? Go back to Disrupt Schemes. If you've not found one, if you've not found a secret and you're a very good spymaster, there probably are no more to find. So, okay, go back to Disrupt Schemes. 
That's very unfortunate. Now there is something we could do. Let's go and have a look. Is there a faction already in existence? No, there is not. There's an independence faction. Um, that's Cornwall and Devon. Okay, yep, yeah, good luck with that. They want to become independent. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Just give it up. Um, and there's some populists here. They want independence as well. I don't think that's going to happen either. We could, we could create ourselves a liberty faction, which could lower the crown authority. That could be quite good because the crown authority is lowered. That means that we can then declare war. The only thing is, we might have a problem with, he might say no. So we might, you know, press our sort of, you know, our ultimatum and go, right, okay, here we go. We want lower crown authority, please. The king says no, and then we have to go to war. So I don't know if we want to do that right now. Maybe we just, I mean, does it, hang on, hang on. What if we just click it? What happens? There's one member. We can add one more person. Who can we add? Who is likely to join? Earl Richard of Norfolk. Okay, he's the guy who just blackmailed because he tried to murder our sister-in-law. Okay, he can be forced to join because of the hook. Ah, so we could force him to join. Nobody else can be forced to join. And a few people though have got bad opinions of the liege. A few people have got bad opinions of the king. So do you know what? Let's leave that running for a while. Let's see if that works. If a few people join, that's going to be quite nice. If nobody joins, I don't know how long they just sit there for. I don't know. I don't know if we sit there forever or if we just give up or I don't know how that works, but we'll see what happens. We'll sort of leave it going for a while. Maybe people over time will get the idea that they would like a slightly lower sort of crown authority level imposed upon them and then they'll start joining. Do you know what? That right now, it's not looking good, is it? No, nobody's joining. It's just us. It's just us on our lonesome. Um, okay, never mind. Right, we'll leave that going. We'll keep an eye on it. And we can get ourselves a new perk. Okay, so what do we go for? Do we go for scholarly circles? Learning per level of devotion plus two. Okay, what's our current level of devotion? That's this thing here. So it's dutiful. Okay, so it's the first level of devotion, but we're not too far away. Okay, we're a little bit of a distance away from getting toward faithful. But if we do that, we're still going to get another plus two was it was it plus two yeah plus two learning per level of devotion so yeah we get another plus two learning and that's only going to go up as we get more faith okay how about we do that then so we'll take that thank you very much up to 18 and then let's sort of let's follow that up let's follow that up a little bit we've got ourselves 356 monies and we've been saving up a little bit now i don't know how much we need i would like to think that is more than enough for t to go on a pilgrimage because, you know, T is focusing on theology. He's you know, understanding He's understanding the divine. Going on a pilgrimage has surely got to help him do that a bit. So you choose a destination among your faith's holy sites. The further you travel, the more piety you gain. Longer journeys are more expensive. Okay, so the holy sites are, if we go and look in the religion bit, get that out of the way for now. And right, so holy sites are dotted around the place. So each religion has their own sort of holy site. So we've got all these here. And they're all controlled by people that are currently Catholic, which means that we get the bonuses from them. So, for example, because Rome is controlled by Catholics, all people that are Catholic get plus one stewardship and development growth of 10%. And the same for all these other places here. So Canterbury is one, apparently. That's quite nearby. Hello, Canterbury. So, yeah, because Canterbury is currently under Catholic rule, uh, religious vassal opinion goes up by five, and the sway schemes are completed 10% quicker. Oh, okay. Oh, that's quite good. So we get to choose to go to one of those. I mean, it would make sense. Oh, it's going to be really expensive, isn't it? Can we afford to go all the way down to Jerusalem? I mean, Rome might be quite good. Pop down to Rome. That might be quite nice. Um, okay, so let's have a look then. Let's see how expensive it is to do all these things. I mean, 368 money is a lot of money. I'd like to think that that's more than enough. So here we go. So prepare for the journey. Let's see what happens here. So Catholic pilgrimage. Time for me to set out on my journey to one of the holy places. But which one? Okay, so Jerusalem. You start a pilgrimage in Jerusalem. This is an exceptionally long pilgrimage. It's going to cost 297 gold. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Wow, that's very expensive. Are we, are, we, are we pilgrimaging first class or something? <laughs> oh my goodness me. Okay, right, that's very expensive. Um, the church is in the Vatican, 212. That's very long. Uh, to Cologne is 170. Or we can choose the other two, but they're a bit near. I mean, what's the point of going on a pilgrimage to Canterbury? Walk there and back. Um, yeah, very quickly. So I'm thinking if we're going to do it, if we're going to go and do this, let's do it properly. Let's do the exceptionally long pilgrimage. And from this, we will get a great big pile of piety. And that might go, I mean, yeah, would it? It'll push us up onto the next level. It'll get us onto the next level of devotion. I imagine we'll get to faithful pretty quickly with that. 
Because, yeah, it's going to give us, I mean, it's going to give us more than 150, I would like to think. For 300 gold investment, I'd like to think we're going to get a big pile of piety from it. So, um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But yeah, okay, that's what we'll do. We'll we'll just we'll just do the, do it properly. We're gonna do it. We're not gonna go on many pilgrimages because I can't remember what the time scale was. Um, we can't go another one until eleven twenty eight. Eleven twenty eight. Fifteen years. Okay, right. So right, if we, we'll do it properly. We'll spend the money. We will invest now because we can't go on another one for a heck of a long time. So yeah, okay. Let's pop over to Jerusalem then. It's the longest pilgrimage that we can do. Okay, so what happens with this now? Pilgrimage, departure. Oh, the music's got all very inspiring. As I prepare for my journey, I know that I will travel safely under the protection of God. I will be gone for a long time and I can only pray the Lord watches over my realm as well. It's fine. The Lord will watch over your realm as will all of these people here. Don't worry, Good Hat's got it. Good Hat is very, very good. We'll put him in sort of in you know second in charge. He can be he can be you know number one, all that kind of stuff. Um, okay, it's time to depart. Let's see where we go. I mean, I imagine that's going to take us a heck of a long time. It took when we when we joined in the Crusades down here. Our people went on a boat, went round that way. Okay, I mean they did come round this way on the sort of you know to go round and get into the Mediterranean, but it took them like eight months or something, didn't it? It took them a heck of a long time. Oh no. Oh, it's, it's gone badly already. We've become ill. It seems I've not taken well to all this travel. Oh, I should have, given, should have kept your hat on, shouldn't I? It's because you've got a cold. Um, Perhaps it's strange lands filled with unfamiliar air, or perhaps my furs are not warm enough. Either way, my cough has been persistent for weeks, and this morning I could barely muster the strength to get out of bed. Do I even have the strength to continue onwards? Yes, you do, T. This is the whole point of a pilgrimage. You're being tested, and you must succeed. Here we go. Travelling while ill poses greater health risks, or I just go home. Oh, no, no, we can't go home. No, no, you have to carry on. You have to carry on. Yes, you're ill, but you'll muddle through. You'll absolutely muddle through. Oh, look, he's got rid of his... I like how he's got rid of his fancy clothes, but, <laughs> but he's still got his fancy sort of circlet thing on. Uh, my son, C. Calum, is more likely to receive a good education due to Duchess Leo de Gundius' tutelage. Oh, wonderful. Oh, that's quite good. That's very good indeed. Oh my goodness me, this is a very troubled pilgrimage. I wake to the noise of chaos in camp, but it is only uh, it only takes me a few moments to realise what is happening. We are under attack. Bandits are swarming our tents and wagons, while our guards do what they can to resist. Oh dear. Okay, so we're ill, and now we're being attacked as well. Okay, where is my sword? I will drive these dogs away. 60% chance that we manage to actually battle the bandits off with our sword. Uh, we gain 75 prestige and we get Blade Master, which would be quite good, but there's only a 60% chance. There has to be somewhere I can hide. Uh, oh, there's even less chance of success of that. 48%. Or well, stop this madness. I will pay whatever you want. We lose 85 money. 85 money and 75 prestige. Not so bothered about that. 85 money is quite a lot. We've already invested a lot in this trip as it is. Um... I'm tempted to do this, so the odds aren't really... I mean, the odds are in our favour, but only just 60-40. And we might get wounded, which is a severe health penalty as we're wandering about on a on a pilgrimage. But come on, 60%. Come on, T, we're going for it. We're going for it. No guts, no glory. You're on a pilgrimage. Do, do the right thing. Come on, let's do this. And yes, the bandits have been fended off. We have got Blade Master. So we now get plus six prowess all the way up to... 11, but we're losing four because we're ill. We're losing four prowess because we're a bit poorly. Okay. Um, right, well, there we go. I mean, can we have a positive thing coming out of this pilgrimage? Are we there? We're there are we there already? Crikey's. Okay, right. We really did get the first class train down. Okay, fine. I thought it might take us a little bit longer, but okie doke. No other city in the world has a history quite like Jerusalem. In addition to the many of the holy sites there, the city contains the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Sepulchre, maybe? I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that. And um, built over the combined places where Jesus was crucified, buried, and resurrected. Standing outside the Temple Mount with my hand on the western wall, I find myself reflecting on everything that has happened on my journey to this city of legend. Yes, quite a lot of stuff has happened, doesn't it? We get 875... <laughs> 875 piety. That's quite a lot. That is quite a lot. Oh my goodness me. Yeah, we're going to absolutely go up to the next level of devotion. We're going to become faithful. Okay, that's very good. We get Pilgrim, which gives us 10% extra monthly piety. And people of the same faith like us a bit more, which is nice. That's pretty good. That'll help with people liking us. And also we get 
because your faith has the armed pilgrimage tenet, um, you gain determined pilgrim for 10 years. Monthly piety per night plus 2%. Okay, and we've got six nights, so we'll get an extra 12% piety from that. Combined with that, so that's an extra 22% piety and a massive pile of it just given to us, just in a massive bag, just a huge bag of piety. Um, okay, I have walked the holy path. We gain the trait pilgrim and we are known for the dedication to our faith and we lost the trait ill. See, there you go. It was a test. It was a test by the Lord to make sure that we saw it through, you know, despite adversity. And the bandits were put there as well as part of the test. But there we go. We are now also not ill, which is wonderful. And we are, we're very much faithful. In fact, look at that. We're on 712 out of 1,000 toward the next level of devotion, which is devoted servant. So faithful gives us the clergy like us a bit more. So all Catholic clergy have an extra plus five opinion of us, which is okay. That's no bad thing. My journey has been a long one, but I have finally come home again. While much remains the same, something has changed in how the priests and bishops treat me. I have undergone the journey of a holy man, and they insist it has changed something about me, whether I can see it myself or not. And the pilgrimage ends. We are back home. We are not ill. Well done, T. Well done. You went, you walked all the way to Jerusalem. I assume you walked or you went on horse or whatever, but you know, I guess you didn't go on a boat. Because yeah, that would have been a little bit cheaty. So I imagine you went all the way across across the you know the whole of this continent down to here, and yeah, you you carried out your pilgrimage, which was wonderful. And now you are a pilgrim, and we've got a great big pile of piety just there, which is lovely. That is ticking up. So um, so yeah, it was very expensive to get done, really costly in gold to actually get that thing sorted. And of course, yes, there was the risk of us you know, possibly dying a bit from being ill, and then dying a bit from being attacked by bandits. But no. We got rid of both those things. We proved our dedication to the Lord, and now we're back in the lovely, lovely duchy of cupboard. In my attempt to align Nonna to my interests, I found an opportunity. I think I could argue that our goals are in fact the same. As I did take my next letter, I tried to emphasize those shared interests, a diplomacy challenge. Okay, so 35%, it works, we gain 75 prestige, and she gains 50 opinion of us. Okay, or if it fails, we lose 75 prestige, no other bad effects, or, we gain 30, uh, she gains 30 opinion of us, and there's no chance of failure. I would rather have that. I would rather have 30, because she's on plus one right now, which is okay. So, yeah, okay, let's do that, and then I think we'll stop swaying her for now. She's on plus 30, that's not too bad. So, right, now, let us go to here. Um, no, not there, hang on, let's go to there. Um, our wife doesn't like us well she, she sort of likes us a bit now we're on plus 11 so it's not too bad and marshall doesn't like us too much however so maybe now maybe now we move the swaying over to you again it's going to take two years it's very 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 slow going but yeah let's get you swayed over to our side now because uh, everyone else is sort of looking okay Everyone else is looking okay with us, except you, Mr. Rowe. So, uh, yeah, let's sway you. And Ethelweird has come of age. Oh, this is wonderful. Okay, so this is our player heir. This is who he might be playing as in the future. They grow up fast. He's got the trait Adequate Bargainer. So only a two-star education trait. So not brilliant. So let's do that. And let's just see what he looks like, actually, now the stats are sort of recalculated. Okay, so he's handsome. He's got adequate bargainer. He's greedy, just, and zealous. Um, his stats, I mean, his stats are better than... They're better than your old man's stats. In fact, all of them, I think, are better on a base except learning. Um, he's okay. He's okay. He's not brilliant. I mean, yeah, diplomacy is is all right. It doesn't help he's greedy, which brings that back down a little bit. But never mind. Um, okay, there you go. There you go. So now you have come of age. Ah, yes, and we arranged a betrothal with Sigrid, didn't we? Because she's really, really good. Although she has taken to the drink a little bit there, which has brought her stewardship down a tiny little bit. But um, yeah, she's beautiful and she's intelligent and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, she's got some good stats. So yeah, if those two, I mean, they can get married. Can we, can we get them married now? Can we do that? How does that work? Can we do this now? Arrange? Can we sort of carry out the marriage? Can we make the marriage happen? Oh no, there's a thing up there. There's a thing there. Yeah, betrothed can marry. So now if we do this, inheritable traits are handsome, intelligent, and beautiful. Okay, this has got to be a good thing. So hopefully the idea is that those two will get together. They will have lots of children with lots of very good traits and skills and stats and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, absolutely get that sorted. And I think they're married. They are now married, which is excellent news. Hang on. Does that mean she she's in our court? Can she teach the little one? Can she teach Clementia? 
I rather think she can. Hang on, educate child. Not us, because we're terrible. Sigrid! Sigrid has now appeared in here, and she's pretty much good at all the things. She's really good, even if she is a little bit of a drunkard. Um, yeah, okay. You do that. Teach, teach our daughter. Okay, that is wonderful. Yes, educate our child, please. That is very, very good. And, um, uh, King Richard has said, um, what, Seekhelm? You want Seekhelm to be raised by Hugh de Bohun, a most skillful guardian. <laughs> no, no, he is not. Also, we suspect he might be possessed. So, uh, thanks for the offer. Thanks for the offer, King Richard, the foolish. You're living up to your name. Um, no, it's fine. We won't, we won't be doing that. Thanks, though. And nobody is joining our Liberty Faction to try and get the Crown Authority a bit lower. So what do I do? We'll leave it for now. We'll just disband that faction because it wasn't going anywhere. I don't think it is sort of impacted our reputation with the King or anything. I think it was just a thing that we set up on our own. You know, we sort of, we had a little sort of clubhouse booked. And every Thursday night we went in there at seven o'clock in the evening hoping that somebody else would turn up <laughs> to join Liberty Club. But nobody did. It was all very sad. So, right, we've cancelled that. It's fine. We've, you know, we've been the sort of schedule for the next year. And um, yeah, maybe... We'll keep an eye out. Maybe some other people will try. At some point, people are probably going to get a bit bored that they cannot just go and attack their fellow sort of their fellow dukes. So maybe at some point, people will go and you know decide that they would like to have lower crown authority so they can get a bit fighty again. And when that happens, if we keep an eye on it, we might go and join in in that particular that particular faction. Oh, our divine guidance has worn off. So, okay, let's hold on to the mystical communion then. Let's go and do this. So, 300 learning lifestyle, divine guidance of five years, very handy. There may be unforeseen side effects. Okay, let's go and do this again then. So, 100 piety, we've got so much of that now. We've got absolutely loads of it. So, I begin in peace. Let's see what happens from it. Oh, Okay, a thing has happened. Now, I don't think anything happened last time, did it? But now a thing has happened. With my mystical practices, I have apparently developed quite a reputation. People don't know what it is I do exactly, but they know they don't want to cross me and find out. It's ridiculous, but perhaps not entirely a bad thing. So they can be as afraid as their little souls make them. We get 300 learning lifestyle, which I think is what we would have got anyway. Divine guidance, that's fine. And then we get dangerous to know. So this character is up to something strange and unusual. Everyone knows that getting on their bad side has severe consequences, probably. So hostile scheme resistance goes up. So people are plotting against us. It becomes a little bit harder. And our dread goes up by 20%. Or swearing that I do no harm will put them at ease. So we get the same stuff. We get devout protector. So personal scheme power goes up 25%. And all the people in our court get plus five opinion of us. Um, I mean, we're not doing anything to harm anybody, are we? It's fine. I will swear that I will do no harm. That, that'll do. Yeah, we're, we're not doing anything bad. We're not doing anything bad. We're just talking to the divine. It's fine. They're lovely, the divine. They, they're always up for a chat. And we can get another perk. So let's go down here. Let's get pedagogy or pedagogy. I don't quite know how you pronounce that still. She's pregnant again. Our wife is pregnant again. Oh my goodness me. I mean, I thought you were well past the age to be writing letters to the stalk. But no, no, that's good. It's still fine. Carry on writing the letters. It's all lovely. Um, okay. So our wards can get additional skills and can become our friends. Okie doke, so unlock that. Now I don't think we have a ward right now, do we? No, we have no wards at the moment. But I suppose when the new kid is born, when the new child is born, we could become their ward and that might be quite good. That might be quite a good thing, I suppose. But yeah, everybody else, well, you don't need a ward anymore because you're old and that's fine. You're old enough to not need one. Um, and yeah, the others have all got them now. The others have all got wards. So, uh, okay, maybe, yeah, when the new kid is born, when the new kid's born, we might become their ward. And then, yeah, we'll get them some extra skills. And then, yes, also, they might become our friend, which is nice. King Richard has declared war on Queen Stephanie. So England are at war with France. Oh, it's a classic war. It's a war as old as time itself. And um, King Richard is being attacked by King uh, Uisdeen. Oh, that's Scotland. Oh, oh, I wonder if they orchestrated that. I wonder if France and Scotland orchestrated that. So England go to war with France over here. The French troops sort of head down this way. And then Scotland say, do you know what? We're going to declare war on you as well. But look where we are. We're in the opposite direction. Ha ha ha. We're coming in to get you. So, um, yeah. Okay, well, what are they exactly warring for? You're, it's a Scottish claim on the, on the kingdom of England. Oh. Oh my goodness me. Okay, not just a county. They're going for the actual king. Okay, right, they're going to control... Oh my goodness me, all this could become Scottish. Um, okay, and what's that for? That is for 
Okay, this one seems slightly trivial now. The English war for Earl Alexander's claim on the county of Chartres, I think that's pronounced, which is right in the middle there. Okay, that's probably not as important as the Scottish one. Although it is, <laughs> it's massively one-sided because Queen Stephanie of France seems to only have 589 people. She's only got 589 soldiers. Is she involved in another war? Um, yes, she is. She's involved. Oh, she's defending against Duke Gillam. Oh, okay, there you go. Of Aquitaine in an independence war. So I imagine a lot of her troops have been have been obliterated in that. And uh, and yeah, so yeah, so she's not doing very well in that war. So yeah, that doesn't seem <laughs> that seems a little bit it's a little bit one sided that conflict. However, this other one, this other one is interesting. Okay, so the Scottish claim is on the whole kingdom of England. He's got one ally. So Duchess Timbor of Barcelona, and you have got the Kingdom of Castile coming in. They've got almost 5,000 people. How many people have you got? You've got 4,000. So yeah, to get that kind of adds up there, so that's fine. Um, you're providing 766, and you're providing 8,041. What if, what if, do we get a hook on him? If we go and help him, do we get a hook on him? Um, hang on a minute, hang on. Offer to join the war... Um, on the Scottish claim, uh, join in as a defender, grow closer to forming a friendship with us. Okay. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Do we want to become his friend? I mean, I suppose being friends with the king is no bad thing, but then he's still not going to give us hooks and things, is he? He's not just going to give us... We're not going to be able to get a hook on him because, yeah, that's we're going to be his friend. That's probably less likely, I would have thought. But who do we want in charge? Do we want him in charge or do we want this Scottish chappy in charge? Okay, King Wisdeen, your... Anything is, you're Scottish. Of course you are, because, you know, you're from Scotland and everything. There's a clue in the name. But if you take over, then, yeah, all the culture groups will all get mixed up and it'll all be a bit of a muddle. Whereas chappy down here isn't brilliant. I mean, he's English compared to our Anglo-Saxon kind of majority. But, you know, it's still closer. I think um, Northamptonshire is still English, isn't it? Yeah, Northamptonshire is still English, so yeah, we have got some of it. Whereas, yeah, you'd be trying to make everyone Scottish and there'd be all sorts of culture clashes and all sorts of things. Do we join in? Do we join in on this particular battle and help our liege? Do we go and help King Richard defend England from the Scots? We'll ignore the French war. They'll, they'll sort that out in absolutely no time at all. Do we go up here and lend a hand? Because there's quite a few Scottish troops just there already. And you know what? They're sieging the land which should be ours. I'm outraged. I'm absolutely outraged. Take care of this place. Don't damage it too much because I want to be controlling it very, very soon. Let's join in. Our troops have been stood around for ages anyway. Our troops have been sitting there just kicking their heels for a long, long time. Let's move our rallying point up to, up to there. Up to the Bishopric of Retford. And then, yeah, let's join in. Why not? Let's try and keep, let's try and keep the Scots out for now. There we go. However, hang on. Maybe we don't want to do that. Can we see what his crown authority is? What crown authority is he exerting upon all of his people? Hang on, can we can we work that out? I can't find it. Maybe it's something that we can't see. Maybe it's something that we just are not allowed to see unless we are actually one of his vassals and he has to be our liege. And then we can see what level of crown authority he is exerting upon people. But, uh, but yeah, I'm just thinking if he has the crown authority of two, so this one here, so the limited crown authority, or indeed one, I doubt he'd have one because, you know, he's a king and he wants a little bit of control over his people. But if he's got limited crown authority over people he takes over here that means that we can go warring with our fellow vassals again but do we want to be doing that do we want to be supporting scotland to take over england i'm not entirely sure we do i'm not entirely sure we do i think let's join in let's join in let's do what we're going to do we will go and help our liege we'll go and help him out he might then become our friend which could become useful i suppose so um yeah okay do you know what let's offer to join in the war the scottish claim on the kingdom of england we're going in as a defender here we go we've joined in we've joined in a war i mean yeah we've had a quiet time of it recently it's been relatively peaceful so here we go let's actually get our troops doing something right organized levies so our um our money has come down a little bit because Chappie here is not providing a 28% sort of uh, nice sort of reduction in prices for the men at arms maintenance anymore. Everyone else keep on doing your things. Uh, okay, let's get our armies raised. So here we go, raise the armies and there's all 3,730 of them. Um, I think we might have a few less because the king has probably taken some. The king's probably taken some of our levies to go and actually do the fighting. But here we go. So these are all our personal ones. And then let's head up to, let's go to here for now. Let's go to Bolton, the lovely, lovely little town of Bolton. And we'll just see what the Scots are going to do. Whereabouts are they heading? 
they're going out onto the sea, which is a bit of a surprise, and we have swayed our marshal, which is wonderful. So he's on 29 now, which is pretty good. I won't mind getting that done again. Okay, let's go to here. Let's stop them sieging Carlisle, uh, or whatever it's called now. Carluel, as it would be called at this moment in time. Uh, here we go. So there's a battle in 13, 12, so 10 days, which we should win. And hopefully they cannot run away from that. No, they're not running away. They're absolutely not running away. We are going in, plus 15, plus 10, so it's looking pretty good. They are bringing in their reinforcements, but I think we should be fine, particularly if England can join in and help. That would be nice. And yes, the English have joined in, and we are just going to absolutely rip them apart. There we go. Oh, look at that. That was wonderful. Okay, so there are two kind of things there have, uh, oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness. Two. Two children. Holy moly. It's okay, right. So the Cupboard Dynasty is looking very, very strong indeed. My goodness me, you have been writing some very persuasive letters to the stork. Um, okay, so we've got a girl and a boy. We've got twins. Oh, this is wonderful. Okay, right. So the girl, um, good Catholic name. What's going to begin with C? Um, Catherine. Yeah, okay, that's fine. We've had Clara. We've got Christina, who looks a little bit worse for wear. Christina, are you okay? You've been severely injured. Oh, no. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, our once glorious Amazonian super daughter is really, really not doing very well at all. She's severely injured. She's flagellant, so she likes to sort of, you know, sort of whip herself with that weird looking sort of uh, whip tool thing there. And um, also, yes, yeah, she's not got much of an appetite anymore. So she was once this sort of mighty Amazonian super person, but now she's kind of, yeah, she's really struggling at the moment. Oh, I hope you sorted out, Christina. Okay, well, there we go. So we've got ourselves, yeah, Christina and Clara, who unfortunately passed away. And then we've got, um, we've got Clementia. Okay, and then Catherine. Okay, and then we need to pick, so what's the boy going to be called? Um, okay, I mean, I don't think, do we need to pick one after an ancestor? I don't think we do. Sis Nando? Who, who's Sis Nando? I don't know who that is. Um, okay, do you know what? I mean, it keeps coming with tea. We're not having that. Uh, let's pick a good name for our um, the, the boy of our twins here. Okay, I've had a complete change of heart about the girl's name. So the girl is now going to be called Cake because it begins with C, so it's fine. So it meets our sort of uh, goal there of all the daughters beginning with the letter C. And the boy is going to be called Biscuit. So the two twins are going to be called Cake and Biscuit, which just sounds wonderful. So there we go. Cake and Biscuit, may you both grow to be strong and wise. And then, hang on a second... I know we're at war and everything, but now let's get you, even though you're really, really tiny, you're two days old, let's get you taught by us. Um, twin opinion. Ah, so the opinion of each, each of the twins' opinions of each other is improved by plus 15 because they're twins. Okay, let us educate you. So you're going to become our ward, which is lovely. And then let's go to, well, let's go to Biscuit. There we go. Ah. Biscuit is handsome. Okay, that's good. He's already got a sort of physical trait. And um, yeah, you can become our ward as well. I don't think we can have any more wards. We've got the two. Okay, that's pretty good though. And um, yeah, what did that thing give us then? What did that give us there? Your wards can get additional skills and can become your friends. That could be very handy indeed. I mean, the additional skills is always very welcome. But uh, but yeah, okay, lovely. Right, okay, so they're born, which is which is splendid. I'm very happy about that. Let's see now what we can do. So the Scots are sort of slunk off up there. Maybe we can just pop over the border, just grab ourselves a territory nice and quick. And our glory is widely known. We've gone up in prestige. We are now distinguished, the third level of fame. So opinion of everybody that's not churchy goes up by five, which is lovely. And we get an extra knight. Oh, that's very good. Do we get six? It's still on six. Hang on. I thought I thought that should go up to seven, possibly, if we get an extra knight. Does that not... Are we not distinguished enough already? We had six knights before, didn't we? Why hasn't that gone up to seven? Maybe because we're at war and we can't get another one now or something. I don't know. Whatever the case, I think maybe we should have an extra knight. Um, so siege events happening, happening every 18 days, which is pretty good. We're making good progress with our siege. So stuff is looking very good. The Scots are coming back this way. But yeah, the English are going up there. So the English, I hope, are going to sort of draw the main sort of bulk of Scottish attention. They can go up there and they can start... I, mean, I don't know what the English are doing. They're just sort of wandering around. What are you doing? Go and take some territory. 
go and fight their armies. Just sort of wandering about, getting on boats, getting off boats. It's not a day out. <laughs> go, go and siege some territories or something, would you? A troubling translation. As I step over the threshold to my court physician, Elfstan's office, I find him bent deeply over a book. The translation of Hippocrates is atrocious, he says with a sigh. If I were to follow these instructions, I'm as likely to kill my patient as I am to kill them outright. Okay, let me have a look. Now, of course, yes, T is very, very clever. He's a very learned man, so let's hope that we can do this. So, learning challenge. I help Elstan translate the text. He increases his learning by two, which is very good, because he's our court doctor, so that's always a good thing. And uh, we gain 300 learning lifestyle experience. Uh, I make a fool of myself. There's a 10% chance of that where he just kind of is a bit disappointed in us because we've made a wally of ourselves with some terrible translating. And the choice may lead down a path of cynicism. I will buy you a better translation. We get 50 learning lifestyle experience. We lose a bit of money, but quite a bit. And he gains the trait novice physician. That's got to be good. That's got to be a good thing. A doctor can actually do basic doctor things. Oh, you should look to the scriptures for guidance. Um, yeah, I'm not such a fan of that. We get some piety. We've got loads of that. Let's do this. I mean, that's exciting. We would get probably 300 learning lifestyle experience, but it might lead down a path of cynicism. This is much better. It gives our doctor an actual doctory skill. He can actually, you know, do doctory things. He's trained in the art of healing. So for 45 money, we get 50 lifestyle experience, which, you know, is okay. It's better than nothing. And now our doctor can actually do doctor stuff. Right, we've done that. King Richard wants this. Who do you want? No, who are you? No, you're rubbish. Stop trying to stop trying to make so raise my children by deploying idiots to be their guardians. No, he's rubbish. Away with you. Decline this nonsense immediately. Okay, thirty days left. Now see, the Scots have gone straight over there. The Scots have gone over there, and they're sieging them. And where are the English? The English armies in all their bazillion numbers are just wandering around somewhere. Who knows where they are? Okay, we control Annandale, which is lovely. The war score is plus sixteen percent to our favour. Okay, if we were to attack them on our own, we might struggle a little bit. We might struggle a tiny bit, but they're not coming over to us right now. They're not coming over here. Where are the English troops? England, can you get on here? Is that where they are? England, so they've decided to deploy, what's that, almost 8,000 troops onto the Isle of Man, where they're just sort of hanging around. The, the, the armies are over here, England. I mean, okay, I know he's called... I, I do know he's called King Richard the Foolish, but really, militarily, that is, that's very poor. Yeah, come over here. Over here is where you need to be. That's where all the Scottish armies are. Um, Okay, right. Let's pop back down here. Let's see if we can actually sort of replenish our troops up a little bit. How many are we, um, how many are we getting back? Are we sort of resupplying here? How can we see how quickly we're resupplying? Um, oh, look at that. 3,447. If we leave that another to get replenished, just one more go. Just one more. Let's move time a bit quicker. Three, four. Oh, oh no, Frederick, what have you done? You look like a child who's been caught with his hand in the sweetie jar. The Catholic world was shocked to learn that my friend Frederick was discovered gorging himself on a luxurious feast of veal cutlets, almond eggs, candied figs. See, I told you he's on the candies. He's on the sweets. And expensive champagne. The excessive indulgence of the feast has cast a dark shadow on his legitimacy. While scandals among the clergy are nothing new, it is disquieting for one to occur so close to home. Yes, we do see these pop up from time to time, don't we? Saying this priest has been disgraced or whatever. Is that going to be one of these things? Okay. Condemn him for his transgressions. He loses opinion of us. We gain 100 piety. Uh, Catholicism has already lost sort of 10 fervor, so it's slightly less popular. And for, oh, he's lost a level of devotion. Oh dear. Um, defend his character. Okay. So he gains opinion of us. We spend 150 prestige. We've got an okay amount of that. 100 piety. We've got loads of that going. He gains 30 opinion of us. He's already at plus 100 anyway. Or maybe I should just be quiet and we gain 25 stress. I'd rather, I'd rather do that. I'd rather defend him. I mean, you know, maybe he'd set up this party and he'd invited loads of people and nobody got the invite. And instead of, you know, he didn't want to waste the food. So he thought he'd eat it himself. Don't worry, I am going to defend you, my good sir. It's going to take quite a lot of stuff, but we will defend you. There you go. We'll defend your character publicly. Okay, right. Are we getting some more troops back? 3,447. Can that tick up? 3,578. Let's head down here. We're not going to be able to get both of these places. 
possibly not being siege. Ah, no, we are, because they're running away. They are bravely running away. Okay, right, hang on a minute. Can we head back up here then? Oh, we're gonna have to do a loop. We're gonna have to do a U-turn. Hang on, do a U-turn. However, it looks like they've realized that we might have been going there. Okay, well, we're just playing this ridiculous kind of cat and mouse game. Okay, fine, fine, we'll do cat and mouse. Let's head over there then. And then when we finish this, we can then siege this place as well. So 3,000 against our 3,600. Oh, however, we are currently being completely murdered. Um, their advantage is plus 48. They're defending in a river crossing. Are they? The river's there. The river's not on our side. Oh, dear. Okay, this could this could go horribly wrong. Um, defending in a forest. Defensive buildings. Commander Marshall skill. Ah, Commander Marshall skill is plus 23. Um, yeah. Okay, right, this this could go wrong. Minus seven, minus six. Okay, England, can you come by, please? Plus five. Okay, this is what we want to see. Lots of pluses. Noughts is fine. Oh, minus eight. It's still... Oh, minus 28. Oh, my goodness me. Their guy just pulled out a complete masterstroke. Um, hang on. We've discovered battlements. Yay. Probably not as important as it could be. Sieg Helm has come of age. Um, hang on. Right, hang on. Okay, that's nice. Sieg Helm has come of age. They grow up so fast. Indulgent Wastrel. A one-star education trait on stewardship. I thought a little thing popped up that said he was doing well in his education. Oh, dear. Um, however, you are a knight. You're an evil antagonist. You're vengeful, sadistic, and honest. Well, that's just confusing. Um... Yeah, and you're... Yeah, okay. You're okay at stewardship. You could have been better. But okay, right. They grow up fast. Are we going to win this war? I think we're going to win this battle, even though we've been pretty terrible in it. We've lost a lot of people, I think. 2,800. Yeah, that's that's not good. Um, and we've captured some people. Who are you? Who have we captured? Who have we captured? Your culture is now fascinated by the divine right innovation. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. I don't want to be fascinated by that. We get to choose what we want to go and look at. And I think this is what we want. We want heraldry. Because that means we can enact the high partition law. Which is a bit like partition that we've got now. But it's a bit better. So most stuff will go to the uh, the eldest the child, so the player heir, and the rest is divided up between the children. So that's a bit better than we've got now. At the moment, it's all split up sort of evenly. If it comes to that, if we're able to enact that, then, um, then yeah, most of the stuff we have will go to our primary sort of player heir. So let's research that. That's going to be 18 years. That's quite a long time. Okay, right, well, let's not hold our breath for that one then. But we are sieging this place. And we have indeed won a war. Where are... Not a war, a battle, sorry. And where are England? They're just, just still sort of monkeying around over there on the Isle of Man. If you could come over here, please, and do some actual work and do some war stuff, that would be good. Your brother Earl Goodhat created the Cadet Branch Cupboard Stafford. What does that mean? What's Cupboard Stafford? I don't know what that means. What is a Cadet Branch? What have you done, Goodhat? Hang on a minute. Goodhat, Goodhat, where are you? What is this? Oh... You've created your own house. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's under the Dynasty of Cupboard. Okay, so it's still under the Dynasty of Cupboard. It's just a different house. How does how does that work? I don't know how this works. I've not seen this before. So all you lots, hang on, let's branch that out as well. So everybody here is under the Cupboard Dynasty under House Cupboard, but Good Hat has created his own new house. So like a sub house for him and his kids, which is called House Cupboard Stafford. He's just sort of hyphenated it. Okay. Um, so obscure. They've only got four living members. Oh, no, good hat. Where's your wife? Hang on, no, that's Maria. Is she not in that? Oh, she's in She's in House Longsby. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So we've got ourselves a little kind of sub-house, which I think that still counts for us. I think they're still living members of the Cupboard dynasty. They're just not in House Cupboard. They're in a different kind of house. They're in House Cupboard Stafford. Okay, that's absolutely fine. And um, right, Scotland, don't think I don't see you down there. You sneaky Scottish people. You came in on a boat and you came in this way and you're trying to take this place from us. I rather think we will stop you. Hang on. Give us a couple of days. Boom. We take another bit of territory and then let's head... Actually, do we want to head there and stop them? I think they might run away if we do that. I think if we go in, they might run off. But yeah, our army sizes are quite close. They're quite comparable in size. Why don't we go there and we'll stock up on troops? 
And if we get ourselves an extra 400 troops, we can go in and fight them. Okay, we've got a prisoner. Da -da, yeah, that's nice. And right, the marshal has been swayed. Okay, right, let's stop doing the sway thing. Let's stop doing that now. Thank you very much. Um, has anybody decided to do a, a liberty faction? Nope, absolutely not. Okay, let's see if we can... Um, yeah, there we go. They're running away. Bye-bye now. <laughs> they're just... They're legging it out of there. They're off down here somewhere. Okay, fine. We'll just keep chasing them. Um... Ethelwyd died from malnourishment? Okay. Why did you die of malnourishment? Can you not feed yourself? You're a, bl you're a legendary blade master. You shouldn't die from being hungry. Um, where were you? Sherwood. Sherwood. That, apparently there's a guy there who robs from the he robs from the rich and gives to the poor. That must have been what happened. <laughs> he must have been quite rich because he was a fortune builder. Some Someone stole all his money and his food and now he's died of, he's died of malnourishment. Um, oh. Okay. Um, oh, you were the you were the steward. Ah, okay. Is this a good chance to get a new steward in? Not really. Not really. Twelve and twelve. Oh, they're both already in positions. Hang on, hang on. Diplomacy. Yeah, we've got nobody better. Oh, this is terrible. We have to get somebody even worse. Okay, Joe. You know what you, Chappy, Mister Abing, you come in with your. 11 stewardship. Oh, that's just not very good at all, is it? Okay, fine. We'll have to try and sort that out. Uh, okay, right. The Scots keep running away. Let's try and follow them in this very silly sort of cat and mouse type thing. And there we go. We're having a fight. I think we're probably going to win that one. I think sheer volume of numbers won that for us rather than anything else. And I think King William II of England replaced King Richard the Foolish. Oh, hang on. The king is dead. The king is dead. What did he die of? He's died of old age. So King Richard the Foolish is dead. King William II of England has risen to the throne. As an influential duke, it's only fair. Um, steward, really? Have you got nobody better? Have you got nobody better to do stewardship? I mean, I'm having that problem as well. I, I completely understand. Um, yeah, okay. Now, this is interesting. Because what is his crown authority on us at the moment? Okay, it's three. He's only just taken over, though. So he might well lower that, possibly. Or... Is there a faction coming up? No, there is not. Okay, okay. Interesting time. So the king is dead. So yeah, King Richard's gone. King Richard is gone. And we have King William and England are taking some good territories over there. We're going to... Uh, we'll run back up here. We'll see if we can take some more territory or fight another army or whatever. Because where is Scotland going to end up? We could just chase them down. <laughs> we could just let them recover and then just go and get them straight away. But yeah, they're taking that place. They will have taken Carrick. Uh, sooner rather than later. So why don't we go over there? Oh, hang on. No, no. They're, they're coming back over here. Why don't we just go and have a fight? Um, there'll be a fight there in a bit, possibly. Why don't we just go and have a, a scrap with these guys? And hopefully... Hang on. Where where are they going? We want to go here now. Go there. A battle in eight days and we can probably win. Yeah, come on. Come on. Catch up with them. Catch up with them. Ah, oh, they just got out. They just, just got away. I think we're comically chasing after them. Go to there. Go to there. Come on, eight days for a fight. Unpause it, that might help. Oh no, they've decided to stay still. Go that way. And there we go. Unhealthy relations. The cupboard dynasty is known far and wide. We've got a point of splendor. Oh, we <laughs> the cupboards are insignificant. Oh, wonderful. What a load of insignificant cupboards we are. Okay, that's wonderful. Um, we've won a battle. We've got a perk. And unhealthy relations. Um, okay, a mangled body ravaged by disease falls from the sky. Skin marred by rashes and bumps that can be seen from even where I'm standing. Okay, it lands a squelch, spreading blood, intestines, and panic. That is grim. Um, okay, yeah, I, I think we've seen this before, haven't we? Um, ooh. Oh no, a 40% chance that the Earldom of Northampshire is ravaged by disease. Yeah, that's quite bad. For 10 years. I do not want a disease to plague Northamptonshire for 10 years. <laughs> we know now, very topically, that that's a really bad thing to happen. Um... Let's study the body. If we do that, we lob that back at Lord Robert of Oxfordshire, who does seem to be a bit of a wally. We don't really like him very much. Oh, he's a seducer. Oh, crikey's. Um, he will become our rival. He'll lose 20 opinion of us, and there's a 40% chance that one of them contracts a disease. Or there's a 50% chance that somebody contracts this disease, but we go and study the corpse, which would give us an extra two learning for five years, which is no bad thing. Let's, do you know what? Let's study the body. One of the court people is going to get it, not us. So, okay, let's have a look. So we're going to get, we're going to be 22 learning. However, has anybody caught a terrible disease? Um, oh, 
Oh, this is wonderful. Duke Gluithian has created a liberty faction against King William. Duke Gluithian? He's... He's the person that we want to take territory of. So he's creating a liberty faction to lower crown authority. And then that means we can declare war on him and take the Duchy of Brynek off him. He's, he's essentially signing away his own duchy here. Oh, yes, absolutely. Right. Um, yeah, Liberty Faction, I'm joining. I'm absolutely in. We're now the leader of the Liberty Faction. That was not my intention, but okay. Right, it's me and you, Gluithian. We can be pals. I know you and my dad didn't get on. And um, let's have open-minded then. Different culture opinion plus 15 and ignore negative culture opinion. Yes. Different culture opinion up by plus 15. That means that our wife might like us a bit. Hang on, does that affect our wife? Do you like us a bit more now, wife of mine? Um, yes, you do. Because you're not bothered about the fact that we're different cultures now. And that might also apply to Nonna. So Nonna now likes us quite a bit, plus 71. We've really turned that round. That is brilliant. Hang on, how's everyone in the court looking? Plus one, okay, plus one, 61, 64s. Oh my goodness me. T, T, well done. You have absolutely turned that round. Not too long ago, nobody really liked you very much, and now lots of people do. Right, okay, we're involved in a fight over here. I rather suspect we might win this fight by sheer volume of numbers again. But skill is kind of coming to play as well. Not so much there. Don't look at that bit. There you go, plus 12. So I guess we beat them there. 89 up to 92. And then if we siege this, in fact, that might be it. That siege there might be enough to tip it over to 100% to end this Scottish rebellion right now. It's on 100%. I think the Scots have, uh, they've lost this war. There we go. So come on, finish finish the job now. It's all done. The war is finished. Hello? Yep, it, the war's still all done. Just just sign it off now. Just say it's finished. Sign off the, you, you've you lost document. Send it over, fax it over, and it can all be finished. And there we go. The documents got there in the end. So yep, we've won the war. That's all very splendid. King Wisdin loses his claim on the English throne. Oh, crikey. So yeah, he's going to have to sort of do something clever to get that claim back if he wants to try again. Um, he pays out a load of money. What do we get? We get 289 prestige and King William II's opinion of us has gone, it's gone through the roof. It's on plus 100. So plus 97 because yes, we contributed in one of his wars and he likes us because we're open-minded and a pilgrim and all that kind of stuff. Um, okay, that's wonderful. That is very good indeed. Okay, so be it. We will disband all of our armies because we don't need them anymore. That's splendid. Well, there we go. It was a fun trip up to Scotland. But uh, but yeah, there we go. We can all come back home now. Oh, and we have some prisoners. Of course we do. And some of them have been there quite a long time. Duke Inga here has been there for 14 months. I apologise. Um, 100 gold. Yes, please. You, 25 gold. Absolutely. You, 50 gold. Oh, this has been very lucrative. And another 30 gold. Oh my goodness me, we're going to make a heck of a lot of money. 297, they will sort of get all their things sorted. 30 gold, 50 gold. We've got up to 515 gold. Okay, wonderful. All those people have gone. I don't really care who they were. One was a duke of somewhere up here, I think. Okay, lovely. So with that done, now our sort of our dungeons and stuff are all clear of people, you know, cluttering them up. We've got the money off them for their ransom, which is lovely. We will finish up for the moment. And next time out, we need to keep an eye on this. We need to keep an eye on the Liberty Faction that we are in with Duke Gluithian. I mean, that's going to come back and that's going to come back and, and bite him on the bottom a little bit because he's going to lower this Crown Authority and then we might well use it to try and take that duchy off him up there. But uh, but it's fine. You know, he's, he started it. We've just joined in his little sort of Liberty Faction club thing. So we'll see what happens with that. And um, and yeah, we just sort of keep on keeping on. We'll try and get ourselves up to this thing here, try and get to learn on the job just to give T skills a bit of a boost. And we'll just see what happens in the Duchy of Cupboard. But uh, yeah, it's all looking very good. It's all looking very good right now. And I'm hoping next time that we can have a look at that. So, you know, we've kind of, yeah, we've made ourselves known to the king, which is a good thing. And um, yeah, now it's just a case of working on that Liberty Faction and then maybe next time going up there and having a bit of a war for the Duchy of Brynek, which obviously is ours. It's obviously ours. It was ours many years ago. It belongs to the cupboards. So we might well go and get that back. I do not know. We'll see what happens next time out. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most splendid indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Crusader Kings 3. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. This sports car is indeed illegal. You clearly couldn't see the sign saying no cars. I have found the place where I am going to live forever. The Tea and Biscuits Cafe.
I want to rename the dog. Um, let's call it uh, Wuffles. Wuffles McBark. Behold the power of the blimp.